Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Delmar again, and today I'm really excited because I'm gonna continue the videos with machine learning. In the last videos, I showed you how to set up ML agents. We went through and created a couple examples, such as creating a crossy road type game where we had the little bird basically cross the road. And in this example, I wanted to do something different, change it a little bit, and do something that I was more passionate about, and that is parking a car. So I know that a lot of us know about Teslas and how they're actually you know, have self-driving capabilities. So, you know, me as a geek trying to look at how that technology is done, I wanted to do something simple with ML agents. So that's what I created this project, which is basically playing behind the scenes. And the goal for this video is I want to show you, you know, how the project works. We're gonna be jumping into Unity, looking at how it's organized. And then by the end of the video, you should have an idea of how I actually created it. I'm also going to show you the code on the next video. So we're going to be looking at how it's implemented. But on this one, what I want to focus on is what things did it, why did it take me so long? And some of the takeaways from working on this for the last two weeks. So one of you asked me in social media, Dilmer, why this is, did it take you so long? Was it too complicated? And to answer that question, it wasn't that it was too complicated, it's that I had to run it many times. So, Whenever you're working on machine learning, you need to start looking at analytics, right? You're going to be using something called TensorFlow. You're going to be looking at the graph. And then based on the rewards that you give to the agent, that's how, you know, in the performance, that's how you're going to know if the agent is actually learning. So that's why it took me so long because I had to run it many, many times. Sometimes I had to run it for, you know, about five minutes. Other times I had to run it for about 10 minutes. Other times I had to run it for about four hours. And you know, sometimes it was learning, sometimes it wasn't learning. And some of the things that I that I found out that work is, you know, do a small run. So I did something that, you know, I think on average about 20 to 30 minutes, you're gonna get a good feeling of, okay, is the agent actually learning? Is it performing, you know, the actions that you want, you want the agent to perform? And, you know, at the beginning, you, you just need to be patient and start looking at the analytics, look at how it's performing and, you know, it took me a couple of days to realize that the agent was learning, but I was quitting too fast. So just make sure that you keep keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to jump into Unity. We're going to be looking at the project. I'm going to show you how the prefabs are set up. Also, how the brain, the actual behavior is set up. What are the, the decision requester options that I decided to use? How many runs did I execute it? We're going to be looking at a lot of information. So I jump into Unity and I start looking at it. All right, guys, so this is a project that I created in Unity and it's called Unity ML Essentials. I'm also going to be putting this in GitHub so you guys can test it out. So the first thing that I want to show you is I'm just going to run it and I want to show you how the agents perform just by looking at the scene. The scene that I'm looking at right now, it's called Parking Lot. I also have another one which is called Parking Lot Advanced and that one just has an extended parking lot. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening right now. And I'm just going to be selecting, let's look at this guy right here and see what he's doing. And you know, even though it's not perfect, the, the agents are trying to get to a target, right? Like sometimes we have two parking spots, sometimes we have one parking spot. The reason why this is changing, and for the most part, it looks like we're getting two, but I have these randomized, whether you know it'll give you one parking spot or two parking spots. I'm gonna show you how that is set up. And the agent also has a lot of raycasts. And there's also, which I'm gonna show you as well, but there's a raycast that is sitting on the top. There's a raycast that is sitting on the pivot point of the car. The reason for that is because I wanted the car to be able to see all the stuff, even the trees on the left, the trees right here. So having the two, I think it helped me in you know speeding up the, the training process. But you guys can see that, you know, this is working, the car is rotating. And obviously this is, you know, how a park will, a car will park, even though I had some people tell me that they park like that. And I'm like, oh, wow, that is, that is really cool. <laughs> but anyway, so this is the scene. Let me go ahead and stop it. And I think for the most part, you guys can see that it's working. So what I want to show you is I'm going to focus on this area, right? And some of the decisions that I made when I was, when I was designing it. So I'm just going to I'm just going to look at the area. So this is a parking lot area. If we look at the project, which I'm going to be putting right here, and you look at prefabs, I try to put everything on a prefab and organize it in a way so you guys, you know, when you clone the project, everything is a structure. So, and, and then it's easier, right? If you make a change to one of these objects, everything just changes. So just make sure that you click here on the open prefab. You guys can see everything that is in that prefab. 
Okay, so look, let's go ahead and take a look at what's what I have in here. So I'm gonna look at the agent first, and then we'll look at you know some of the things that I had on the other on the other elements. So the first thing is gonna be this pairing game object. It's gonna be just you know the actual area. You know, ML agents recommends that you put everything in an area, and then when you're training, you're gonna have all the multiple areas, which in my case, right, it's gonna be a prefab. So that way, when you're doing training, it's going to be speeding that process up. And I mentioned that on the previous video, if you guys haven't watched that. The other thing that I did is, is I you know, have a road on the very bottom. I also have you know, the car agent. This is gonna be the most important part of the training process because this is the one that is capturing all the data. So as the car moves through, the rays are just capturing you know, the positions, the rotations, like anything that it sees through those rays is going to be gathering. And that information is what it's, what it's actually teaching the agent what it needs to do. So it finds patterns, and then based on those patterns, we're gonna reward the agent. So in our case, what I'm doing is, if the agent gets to the goal, that's when I'm gonna give the agent points. But if the agent doesn't get to the goal, what I'm taking, I'm taking points away based on every action of the, so as it's going through, I'm basically taking points away. I'm, I'm grabbing the max count, which is actually the count that I have right over here. If we look at this count, I'm basically grabbing the max steps. And I'm dividing, I'm dividing that by the, by actually I'm doing one divided by that, which is gonna give you, you know, a very small number that we're gonna be taking away on every action that this is taking. So normally I have this one set to 5,000. I set it to 1,000 because this tells the agent, like on every episode, how many steps that the agent needs to take before we end the episode. So I wanted to do 1,000 because the agent was like doing weird things. And I was just resetting, you know, I wanted to make it a lower number so that we, you know, the agent knows that it needs to complete, you know, in 5,000 steps. In this case, I set it to 1,000. I think, I think for this, you know, for this demo, 1,000 is fine. But anyway, so going back into this, so if we look at some of the pieces of the agent, the agent has a box collider in that, you know, that's so that I know that when I get to a goal, we we're colliding with, you know, we're colliding with the goal. So we know that I can, I can give the agent a reward. The agent also have a rigid body because I'm moving the agent with physics. So behind the scenes, I'm using the add force and I'm passing in a, a speed and then I'm multiplying that by a time. And then I'm just saying velocity change on the argument. So I'm just basically incrementing the velocity, decrementing the velocity, depending on the action that I get from the, from the academy. So let's go ahead and go back here and undo this. There we go, make sure that I have it set. So rigid body is used for that. I also ended up freezing the rotation because I didn't want the agent to rotate on X or Z. I just wanted to rotate on Y because we know that the agent needs to, you know, take a left or take a right depending on where it is on the area. So the other piece that I also had was the car controller. So this is actually the first thing that I started with. I created the area and then I'm like, okay, I need to figure out how this guy is going to move. And what, by this guy, I mean the car. I need to be able to control the car. So whenever you're starting with ML agents, I would basically, I would recommend that you focus on the controls, the inputs that the agent is going to have. Just write them down, put it on the board, and then that way you know what values you should be receiving from you know, the training data. So in my case, I know that the car is going to be moving forward. I know that the car is going to be moving backwards. So that's, that's two states right there. And then this one is gonna be moving to the left, so that's three. And then it's gonna be moving to the right, that's gonna be four. And then it's also going to state idle, so that's gonna be another one. So just keep those in mind because when you're coding the, the behavior, we're gonna to have to tell the agent, you know, how many, what, what the vector action is gonna be. In this case, I have it set to four. That's because the agent can, you know, have four different actions. They're starting with zero, meaning idle, and then, you know, going all the way to four. So that gives you five with a, basically counting zero as one of those. And so now that you have that, and I have the car controller, the car controller has a speed, because I need to know how fast the, the car is going to be moving. The, the reason why I added parameters here as well, I wanted to control these because sometimes when you're doing training, you, you want to change those parameters because if you're doing it too fast, the agent might not learn. If you're doing too slow, the agent might not learn as well. So I wanted to you know, look, at, look at how I could change these parameters and how those parameters would actually affect the training. So I added a speed, I added a torque so I can, I can apply physics on the rotation. I also added a minimum, you know, minimum speed before torque 
so that I knew, you know, at what point, at what point I could actually start doing the rotating animation on the on the tires because this actually this component has an animator. If we go to the animator, we can look at some of those. Let's see, let's look at the animator here. But yeah, so it has a basic animator and I'm changing the, the animation state based on those parameters. So if I go back to the car and we look at some of these, this helps me understand at what point I need to set the idle animation. This one helps me understand at what point I need to set the rotation animation. And then if, if I go beyond these, you know, these two, then I know that the car is actually moving. So that's why I'm using some of these parameters. And then I, I have the car animator instance here so that I know I have a reference so that I can set the, the proper animation state. So the other piece that is really important is going to be the behavior parameters. In this case, I call it the car behavior because you know if I have multiple areas in here, all of these areas are basically linked together to the same behavior. That way, like I said at the beginning, if you're doing training, every training data on each area it's contributing to the overall learning of that brain. So if we go back, let's go ahead and go back here and then look at the car agent again. So the other thing that I wanted to also do is take vector observations. So right now I have it set to nine because I, I'm capturing the local rotation of the agent. I'm also capturing the, the local position of the agent and I'm also capturing the rotation of the agent. So I ended up doing nine because that's going to be, you know, it's three on each. So local rotation is going to be actually four. And then anyways, so I'll show you how that works. And the vector action is the, you know, how many actions I'm gonna be taking. So like I said, this one's gonna be moving forward. It's gonna be moving backwards. It's gonna be rotating. So that one's set to four. And then it's gonna be the model. In, in my case, I decided to do, to keep this, you know, keep track of all these models because I wanna know how they're doing based on, you know, parameters that I'm changing. So. I want to show you something really cool that I ended up doing here. So if I go to sheets.google and we look at machine learning, self-parking runs. So this is something that I decided to do and I don't, I don't think you need to do that, but I, I found it really helpful. And what I ended up doing is I ended up creating a spreadsheet. I have a speed torque, mean, mean torque, mean idle, max step, race per duration, rate radius, basically all the parameters on the, on the agent that are going to be affecting the learning of the agent, right? So what I decided to do is, okay, I'm just going to start calling, you know, labeling these in a way that I could go back and determine, okay, how did the agent do? Did it do okay? And then I have some notes in here that are describing what happened. Like in this case, run one, I had about 2.5 million iterations and I don't, I don't, I didn't capture anything in there. I just ran it. I don't think that one did that good. And then in this one, I said, okay, added a transform rotation in gold transform rotation to observations and, and I put in the result notes, the agent rotates too much and to test different areas. And this one didn't really do that well. So I, I decided to do more runs. And then this one, I lower the barriers, which are these barriers right here because the agent couldn't see, you know, couldn't see really well. But then I ended up doing, you know, the race on the top of the car. So anyway, so I did this so that I could keep track of what was happening on each run. And as I was running a simulation, then, you know, I could keep, I could understand what happened. And if this one did better, then I know which parameters do better. And then I know that the aging is gonna do better with these parameters. So that's what I started doing that on this one. The other ones that you see here are from the previous videos. Those ones I didn't do that there, but I'm gonna keep doing that in the future videos. I think it's gonna help you, you know, understand how I keep track of changes. So that's how I did those and the, the behavior parameters is basically what I, you know, what I use for, you know, what I, what I want the car to be, you know, observing and then what actions I want the car to be taking. And behavior type, you know, default, I did also heuristic because I wanted to know how the car would behave with the car controller input. So, you know, I, I mentioned that in the previous video, but if you want to, you want, you want to start with that, right? Like you, you want to start with the car controller, you get the inputs and that way when the car starts moving in the way that you want it, you want to test the behavior of the agent by setting this to heuristic because that's going to be using the inputs that you, you type on the keyboard and then sending that to the agent so you know that it's working. And then once you're done, you can set it back to default. So the other things that I also had in here is the car agent. Like I said, in this one on the, on the final version, I'm using 5,000 steps because I'm gonna be taking 5,000 steps 
before, you know, from the point that I'm starting all the way to the very end. And then just for now, because I wanted just to show you the demonstration, I set it to, I set it to 1000. If you set it to zero, it's basically gonna run until it finishes. So you can place with that, you can play with that value as well. Let's go ahead and set it, we just set it to 5000, I think it's okay. And then these are coming from the, from a class that I created as a base agent. It's basically, will change the material on the ground. So if it's successful, set it to green. If it's not successful, it'll set it to red and you know any other state, it's just gonna set it back to default. Let's go ahead and go back here. And then the other thing that I wanted to do on this car is I wanted the car to have more sensors. Like I said, I, I wanted the car to see everything, not just from this point right here where you can see this ray sensor that is on the pivot of the car, but I, I also wanted to have you know sensors on the top. So I decided to try you know doing sensors on the top as well. I noticed that Unity was doing that in one of the examples. So I'm like, okay, it's gonna do that as well. So this one, I call it a pivot sensor. It's the one that is sitting on the pivot point. The tags that this is using is car, because I want, I want this car to be able to see the other cars. I want this car to be able to see the goal, the barriers, anything in here that he's colliding with are gonna be the barriers. And then the trees, I wanted the car to know that there are trees as well. Because when the car is getting here, if the car sees a tree, it might slow down because I'm also capturing the velocity of the car as an observation. So, you know, more data, more tags, I think it improved the training process. And then, you know, these are different parameters that I have on how many rays I have, the max ray degrees, if I want the, the rays to actually rotate all the way across. Then this one I did 180, on the one on top I did 190. And then I just use some of the default values on the other parameters. And on this one I decided to move it up so you guys can see how you can move this ray up and down. I think the value that I set is 3.6 that allows me to see everything through at any point, you know, regardless where the car is. I mean, in this case, this is a small area, but in other cases, when we might make a bigger area, we may want to have these rays be able to see through without, you know, blocking them with barriers. And then I think everything else in here. The other parameters that I also been playing with is decision requester. This one is really helpful because it'll tell the agent how many decisions to request on every step. So in this case, I wanted to do you know, I wanted to do two decisions. I think this is, let me, let me read that through just to make sure. This is the frequency with which the agent requests a decision. So I think I did five was the default. And then I started playing with this value just to see how it performs. So I think right now I set it to two and I think that that one worked well. So you can play, like I said, there's really no a right or wrong way. I think when you start running your simulations, you're gonna start noticing patterns and then based on those patterns, then you're going to be changing the parameters. So that's how the agent works. The other pieces that I have in here is the dashboard. This is something that I still need to hook up. I haven't really hooked up. I did that on the previous video, but on this one, I haven't finished that. I wanted to just, you know, calculate how many rewards I'm giving it on every episode, actually the total cum cumulative reward over the training, and then how many completed episodes, you know, have, have gone through. And this is gonna be a total, right? It's not gonna be just per episode, but it's gonna be a total value. And also the step count. So if we're doing a million iterations, the value of this is gonna be a million. So that's what the dashboard's going to be. I'm gonna finish that up for the next video. The trees is just, you know, simple trees. They're just, you know, geometry. And the barriers as well, they also have a tag called barrier. If we look at the tree, if we look at one of these guys, I also, oh, I don't think I actually tag it, so that is an issue. I need to actually tag him, and no wonder why sometimes uh, the agent was colliding with those. But basically what I'll do is I'll just go here and then we can just tag it uh, straight. There we go. And now all the trees should have that tag. So for the barriers, I did tag it, and it's important to tag him because remember the rays, the ray sensors need to know that that's a barrier. The ray sensors need to know that this is actually a tree. And then for the grass, I don't think I did anything because that's just on the ground. And if we look at, let's go ahead and look at the car spots. So that's got, the car spots are important and I have a script in here that the way that it works is you tell it, okay, what the prefab for the goal is gonna be. So in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm basically putting a spot depending on the spots that I random, randomly generate. So what's gonna happen is it doesn't matter how many cars I have in here. I can have a hundred cars if I wanted to. But this script, what it does, it gets all the different cars 
and it's going to generate a number based on the minimum and maximum value. The minimum is going to be 1, the maximum value is going to be 2. So in this case, if I have it, to, if I have it set to 2, what's going to happen is going to give you either 1 spot, it's going to be available, or 2 spots are going to be avail available. If I set this value to 5, it could be that we get 1 spot available, or up to 5 spots available. So that's what, how this value works. And the goal final, that's going to be the final, you know, the actual where I put the goal. So if I get a one spot available here, I'm going to be putting a goal here. So the car is going to go away. The goal is going to be put in there. And that way I know that when the car is moving, it's going to be looking at that goal. So if we look at the goal final, all it is is just basically an empty prefab with a collider on it. So, and it's also tagged as goal. So when, when the car reaches that goal, and if it collides with it, then I know that the goal type is going to be a final destination. And this is going to be the reward that I give the agent. So the script that I have in here is basically the responsibility of it is going to be to make sure that we're colliding with the player. It's also going to make sure that we're giving a reward to the player if it collides with it. So you can change this. I parameterize it because I wanted to play with the values of the reward. So in this case, I give the agent a five. And then this one, it's, it's another parameter that I added and, and I'm going to be testing with it, but the way that it works is I, I want to make sure that the agent has a specific rotation. So this is just a value that is going to tell the goal, okay, if the agent is within this rotation, then I'm, going to, I'm actually going to reward the agent. If it's not within that rotation, then I'm not going to reward the agent. That way, when the agent is parking, it's basically going to park you know, straight, just like it would, it would happen in real life. Unless, you know, the agent, the person who is driving the car is a really bad driver. So then you can increment that number. But anyways, that, that's how that part works. Let's go ahead and look at other components. Going to go back here. And so we looked at the trees. We looked at the barriers. I also have some long barriers. That's going to be the ones that are on the side. It's basically the, the same barriers that are just a stretch. And let's go ahead and look at the grass. I already looked at the spots. The cars themselves, there's really not much in them. All, all, all I have in here is just a box collider. And I have a rigid body because these cars from, for the, are also used for the previous video where you know, we're using the crossy row type game. And these cars are moving, so I'm using rigid body on this car for that, for that video so that I can move it. And the car obstacle is also used for the agent. So I want to know if the agent is colliding. And if it's colliding, if it's a car, then I know basically how, how to penalize the agent if it's colliding with the car. So this one just have different, you know, different enums. So one could be the, the barrier, one could be the tree, car, and the ground. This is so that if I want to add another collision, let's say that I want the tree to also take points from the agent, they can, I can also use this script if I wanted to. So that's how car spots work. And parking lines, these are pretty simple. They're just dumb. They're, they really don't do anything other than draw, you know, draw the area. So these are just different lines that I that I drew in there to represent that. That was a parking area. So that's how this part works. Let's go ahead and look at, I just want to show you something that I, I found really helpful. So let me go ahead and pull the TensorFlow. Okay, so we're just going to look, let me go ahead and pull it right here. I already have it running, so it's going to look at this. So if you want to run TensorBoard, this is going to, this is how it's going to work. So you're going to look at the results. And this is going to happen after you run the simulation, right? You're going to get this folder. And if we go to that folder, I can show you how that looks. It's going to have all the different simulations. I wanted to keep track of them. So if you look at run one and we go to my spreadsheet, you can see that that's going to be what happened on run one. So not only I get the spreadsheet, but I also going to have, you know, the TensorBoard data that is going to tell me how the, the agent actually performed. So in my case, let's say that I wanted to look at that. I can go here and we can say TensorBoard and then a space and then logic DIR and then the results folder, I'm going to hit enter. It's going to basically provide you with the web server URL. We're going to be just launching that in the browser. So I can go here and I can just say, you know what, I want to look at TensorBoard. It's going to take a minute here to load. But once it loads, we're going to be able to, we're going to, be able to look at that data. I think the more data that I have, the longer that it takes to, that it takes to run. Let's give it a second here. It should be, there we go. So this is why it's important to keep track of all of these ones, not only on the spreadsheet, but also don't delete them from the result directory because you're going to be able to see, you know, what happened at any point. So if I wanted to see, you know, how run one did, you can look at run one. 
And let's say that I wanted to see how run one versus one, you know, run two did. Then this starts to, to help you with the training, right? So in here, I know that the training in, in run two, the agent was learning, you know, the cumulative reward was, was greater. And it got, actually started to go down. And then, it, you know, if you look at the train, they're actually doing okay. They're, they're, they're actually kind of similar. So you can also change the smooth. And we started learning really fast. And that could be that, you know, multiple agents got to the parking spot faster than the other right away. And that could be luck. That could be randomization. But at some point, it's going to start, you know, getting flat. flat. And then when it gets to that, you know that it didn't really change much of the behavior of the agent. So this is a good, you know, good comparison to look at. And then if we start looking at, you know, run three, you know, this one's actually trending up and, and the line is, you know, it's a little bit above the other two. So I think, I think we're doing great there. And if we look at four, you can see that one is beneath the other ones. And if we look at five and then six, the other thing to also keep in mind is this number right here, right? This is 200,000 iterations, 400,000 iterations. I had one that I ran it for, let's see. I think this one took about, I think, oh yeah, run one took about one, let's see, one hour and 16 minutes. So just keep in mind that some of these runs are gonna take a while. These ones I just didn't wanna wait and that's why we only have that many. But I can also go back and resume these runs if I wanted to just, you know, see how they perform. And if we look at all of them, you guys can see how, you know, this one was the one that I waited the longest. It was three hours and 43 minutes. And that's the one that I, I think I ended up with. Let's see which one is that. That's, oh, actually run 11 took five hours and 30, and 30, let's see, and 46 minutes. So I think that's the one that I ended up adding as my best. That one learned, you know, you can kind of see how that one learned the best. So if we go back, I'm actually going to, let's get, go ahead and uncheck all of them we can look at run 11. And this one, it was really interesting because the agent wasn't learning fast enough, but then when we got to 500,000 iterations, it's like the cumulative reward started to increment. And then it just kept on going up and up and up. And this one was the one that I think did, you know, best overall. So that's why you can use, I look at this graph quite a bit. You can also look at, you know, episode length. I think this is really helpful because it'll tell you how fast the aging is learning and when, you know, how fast the episode is, is ending. And then there's other things in here that I haven't really looked too much into, but you can also look at, and I think it's going to give you a lot more information about how much the agent is learning. So let's go ahead and go back and look at one more thing. And so that's how this area is, you know, it's working. The other scene that I wanted to show you as well that I created, it's going to be the advanced. So this one I wanted to, you know, make it a little bit more tricky where I know not only have cars that are parked here, but I can have park, car parks here, and I can also have you know cars parked in this area. So let's go ahead and look at how this one runs. So it's gonna go ahead and hit play. And we can see the results. This one was interesting because the car kept on rotating. Yeah, look at that. And But it actually landed, like in this case, let's see, let's look at, and it looks like this one, it landed there. I think I have an issue with this one because the car is actually landing, but it's not, it's not turning green. But you guys can see how it's actually working. It's landing on the right, on the right spot. And there we go. And you can see how some of these ones, so this one looks like it's, we have a couple of greens. We had a green in there, but for some reason it didn't, it didn't mark it as green. It might be that I am random. Uh, there we go, that one worked. It might be that I'm changing the, I'm generating the new spots too fast and it's colliding and thinking that it didn't, it didn't pass, but they're actually working. So you guys can see how this one is rotating. I think I find that interesting that the car keep, keeps on rotating. One of the things that I'm going to be looking at is decrementing the, the parameters on the car controller. I think I'm going to decrement the torque and also the physics material that I assigned to the ground. I'm going to increment the friction. So the car doesn't rotate, you know, as much. It looks like we have the car that is stuck. So it's not perfect. I think it's working. It's just, you know, we, I need, I still need some work to do there. But let's go ahead and run this one one more time, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to call it good. And let's go ahead and wait until it finishes. There we go. It looks like we have some cars. 
I think what happens is I make some changes on this scene and we go ahead and go back here and make sure that I think I had this one set to about a two. This one had it set to a two and I think that's fine. So I think, yeah, I think overall, I think everything works. That's everything that I wanted to show you guys. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to be checking this into GitHub so you guys can download it. And I'm gonna be making some changes and improvements on this. And I think on the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on showing you the code and some of the implementation. And by then I think I'm gonna have more polishing done on this, basically on this repository. So if you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys.